we have seen earlier in videos that any process which is being executed the pages of that process are brought into the main memory and put in the memory frames but each process needs a minimum number of frames the reason for allocating this minimum number is due to the performance because if the number of frames which are allocated to each process if they decrease then the page fault rate will increase and the process execution will slow down so this is how the performance will be degraded also once there is a page fault then that particular page has to be brought from the disk back to the main memory into a free frame and that instruction which caused the page fault will have to be restarted so all of this leads to degradation in performance so that means that any process which is running should have enough frames to hold all the different pages that any single instruction can reference and what does this mean so let's take an example that there is a machine and where all memory reference instructions may reference only one memory address so let's say that this is the logical address space of the process and these are the pages and the instruction is at this particular address and the architecture the isa instruction set architecture of the machine is that any instruction can if it is having a memory reference then it can reference only one memory address so that means there will be one page where the instruction would be there and this instruction would be having a memory reference and that memory reference would be some other address may be in some other page so that means one frame would be required for the instruction and one frame would be required for the memory reference so at least two pages uh, will be required that means two frames minimum need to be given to this kind of a machine now let's say if one level indirect addressing is in allowed what does that mean so again let's take an example so here there is an instruction in one particular page and it is having a indirect memory address so that means the memory address that is being referred to in this instruction is pointing to some page where the particular address is there and since it is an indirect memory address that means the actual memory address is available at this particular memory reference so this again is pointing to some other address in some other page possibly so if we have an instruction where this where an indirect addressing is allowed that means for example there is a load instruction which is in frame x can refer to an address in frame y so we are assuming that each page is available in each of these frames and now this is referring to the actual address which is in frame z that means if this kind of addressing mode is allowed then paging will require at least a minimum of 3 frames per process otherwise page fault will start happening so the minimum number of frames per process that should be there that means they are defined by the instruction set architecture or what we say is the architecture of the machine so if indirect addressing is not allowed as we saw over here then two frames would suffice but if indirect addressing is allowed then three frames and then again depending upon the addressing modes of the instruction which are defined by the architecture the minimum number of frames per process can be determined what is the maximum number of frames that can be allocated to a process this is de defined by the amount of available physical memory for the user so if there are x number of total frames in the physical memory and if there is no pro other process then of course the maximum number can be the maximum number of frames that are available so if there is some free frames a free memory which is of a fixed amount that means some fixed number of free frames are there 
then how to allocate these frames among various processes? Each process would have a requirement for a minimum number of process, uh, frames. So how to allocate this fixed number of free frames amongst the various processes? So if we are assuming that there are m free frames and then there are n processes and each process has some requirement, then how many frames does each process get? So there are two major frame allocation schemes. One is the equal allocation and the other is the proportional allocation. In equal allocation, the total number of m free frames, they are divided equally amongst the n processes. So that means each process gets m by n frames. And we are not here, we are not considering the frames needed by the operating system. We are only considering the frames which are available to the user processes. And out of these m by n frames, whatever is the share that is given to each process, the remaining frames are kept in the free frame buffer pool so that in case any process requires an additional page or any frame, it will be given to that particular process. So let's say there are 93 frames and 5 processes. That means in equal allocation, each one would get 93 divided by 5, which is equal to 18. So each process will get 18 frames and the remaining 3 frames will be kept in the free frame buffer pool for any emergency demand by any process. What happens in proportional allocation? Now we have, we know that there are various processes which need different amounts of memory. Each process does not need the same amount of memory. So let's say that there is a system with a one kilobyte frame size and there are 62 free frames. And now there are two processes, one small student process of 10 kilobyte and then there is an interactive database which would be large of 127 kilobyte. Now if we think that we are going to do an equal allocation, then 62 divided by 2 would be 31 frames each. Now look at this process, which is the small process, which is of 10 kilobyte. The frame size is 1 kilobyte. So that means this particular process does not actually need more than 10 frames. So this equal allocation uh, technique does not make much sense over here because this two small processes do not need more number of frames. So the solution for this is to use the proportional frame allocation technique. That means allocate the available memory to each process according to the size of that process. So let's say the size of the virtual memory for process PI BSI and S is the sum of all the logical pages or the size of each particular process. So that means if process P1, the size is S1, for process P2, the size is S2, for process P3, the size is S3, then S is equal to S1 plus S2 plus S3. So now when we are doing proportional allocation, and if the total number of available frames is M, then we are going to allocate AI frames to process PI. That means P1 will get A1 number of frames, P2 will get A2 number of frames and P3 will get A3 number of frames. And how is this AI determined? So whatever is the requirement, whatever is the size of that particular process divided by S, which was the total and multiplied by M. Which, which is the available number of frames. And we can adjust AI to be an integer which is greater than the minimum number of frames required by an instruction set. But we should take care that this sum of this AI should not exceed M. That means A1 plus A2 plus A3 should be less than equal to M 
and what is a1 we have determined a1 from here which is s1 upon total into m similarly a2 is s2 upon s into m and so on and each has been in, uh, like adjusted to be an integer which should be greater than the minimum number of frames required by the instruction set and this condition should be taken care of. So if we have let us say 62 frames now there are two processes P1 with 10 pages and P2 with 127 pages. So what is S? S is the size of each process the logical address size 10 plus 127 which is 137. So by to proportional allocation P1 will get the number of pages required by P1 divided by 137 into the total number of frames and then it will be adjusted and come out it will come out to be approximately 4. Similarly P2 will get 127 divided by 137 into 62 which is 57. 57 plus 4 is 61 which is less than 62. So now both processes here in this technique they are sharing the available frames according to the needs. Now if the multi-programming level increases now let's say that the there is another process which is coming in the memory. So now instead of two processes now there are three process. So now the proportional allocation will take place again and each process P1 and P2 they will lose some frames. So earlier they had 4 and 57 respectively. Now they will lose some frames and provide these frames to the new process based on again the proportional allocation scheme. And if the multi-programming level decreases, so let's say there were P1 and P2 only and now P2 has finished and left the memory. So then P1 can be given more pages. So if the multi-programming level decreases, that means the number of processes which are currently in main memory, if they decrease, then the frames can be allocated to the departed process can be spread over the remaining process. So whatever frames that were allocated to the departed process that means if P2 has gone the frames allocated to P2 can be spread over the remaining processes which are there in the main memory. Now